From the beautiful island of Tobago comes the radical voice of power, Bishop Roel Reed of the Mount Grace Open Bible Church. Sunday morning worship service at Mount Grace is at 8 a.m. Patient Hill Open Bible Sundays at 8 a.m. Roxborough Open Bible Sundays at 9 a.m. Castaro Open Bible Sundays at 10 a.m. Junior Church at 8 a.m. Sunday Youth Service at 6 p.m. Tuesdays Healing and Deliverance Service. Wednesdays Prayer Meeting and Bible Study. Fridays Hour of Power. We also provide a daycare and kindergarten school service from Monday to Friday. Office hours Monday to Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. For counseling and prayer, call 639-6403 or email us at mountgraceopenbible at gmail.com. God bless you and our doors are open wide to welcome one and all. Even as we sing, just lift your hands and tell God that He's faithful and we thank Him. Hallelujah.
about the salvation of the family my message is entitled the salvation of the family I don't care how successful you are how wealthy you are if it is not well with your family you cannot be truly happy you know we like to wish people a happy new year if it isn't if it it is not well with you and your family you cannot be truly happy so to have a happy new year it must be well with you and yours you and your entire family and so i want to read this story that actually took place in the New Testament from the book of Acts and I want to pick up the episode from verse 25 because these two men of God were preaching the word of God to the people back there and because they were preaching the word of God 
they were being arrested and put into prison for the word of God and this is taking place right now in many parts of our world and so verse 25 said around midnight Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns of praise to God the other prisoners were listening to them suddenly a violent earthquake shook the foundations of the jail and all the doors immediately flew open and all the prisoners chains came loose i love that the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors open thinking the prisoners had escaped he drew his sword and was about to kill himself but Paul shouted as loud as he could do not harm yourself we are all here the jailer asked for torches and rush into the jail he was trembling as he knelt in front of Paul and Silas then he took Paul and Silas outside and asked this amazing question this most important question that you have to ask yourself tonight this is the most important question that you can ask at the close of 2018. He asks, Sirs, what do I have to do to be saved? Sirs, what do I have to do to be saved? The man realizes that he had to do something to be saved sirs what do i have to do to be saved sirs what do i have to do to be saved they answered believe in the lord jesus christ and you and your family will be saved believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you and your family will be saved they spoke the Lord's word to the jailer and everyone in his home at that hour of the night the jailer washed Paul and Silas wounds because they were beaten up the jailer and his entire family were baptized immediately. The jailer and his entire family were baptized immediately. The man question was answered. Sirs, what do I have to do to be saved? Are you asking some inner Christian tonight? What do I have to do to make this family a happy family? What do I have to do to ease this pain of frustration and misery in my life? What do I have to do to be happy as a humankind? What do I have to do to bring some peace in my life? Some peace in my family? What do I have to do? They said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I realize that many families are hurting. I realize that many families are undergoing some tremendous pain and misery. And I want to let you know that 
God has never planned it that the families of the earth should be pained and should be hurting. The first family upon the earth was damaged by the devil. And he still had that pursuit to damage families. Because he knows that God loves family. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Even though many families are hurting, I have good news for you tonight. I have good news for you that are hurting. Jesus is still the family savior. He is still the family savior. He is still the family sustainer. He is still the family keeper. Jesus is still the family savior. The apostle said to the Philippian jailer, and I want to impress this upon our minds tonight, upon your mind, upon your spirit. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you and your family will be saved. Saved from what? This man was a prison officer. I believe financially things were well. Things were good. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you and your family shall be saved. Saved from what? That's the question that many are asking when we present Christ to them or when we ask the question do you want to be saved? Are you saved? Saved from what? I'll let the word of God answer this for you. John 16 the favorite portion of scripture in the New Testament. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not Perish. Save from what? Perishing. Save from what? Perishing. Whosoever believe on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent the Son into the world to destroy the world. But that the world through him might be what? Saved. Might be saved. Saved from the hate of the devil. Saved from the works of the devil. Saved from what? From the devil's wrath. From the devil's hate. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved and your family. Do you believe in him? Do you believe in him? What it means to be saved. What it means to be saved. Most dictionary have keep safe or secure someone or something from harm or danger. You know, like when you give your money to the bank, they put it in a very safe place. They're securing it for you. 
But you know, teeth can break through. <laughs> so the dictionaries, definitions, they have many definitions. They are very shallow. In the Bible, to be saved means to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. To accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Because ultimately, Jesus is the only one that can save the world. The world is already under condemnation. Only Christ and Christ alone can save this world. He came not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He is the only one that can secure This world of humankind. You know when you look back at history. You will be convinced that something has gone wrong with the world. Millions of people died. By wars. Millions died by diseases. Millions died by murders can you imagine that we have over 500 murders in trinidad and tobago can you imagine the pain in these families oh god oh my god there are Three indispensable things to complete salvation in Jesus Christ. Three indispensable things to complete salvation. You see, Christ came as the Savior of the world. He came as the Savior of your soul. But there are three indispensable thing that you must do one two three indispensable things despise these things and you cannot experience complete salvation the philippian jailer did not despise these things the apostle paul and Silas said to him, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved and your entire family. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 25 said, Therefore he is able also to save forever, completely, perfectly. This is from another translation. Therefore, he's able also to save forever, completely, perfectly, for eternity, those who came to God through him. Since he always lived to intercede and intervene on their behalf with God. So salvation is something complete. It is something powerful and dynamic. God is able to save you not just from your sins, but he's able to save you from the venom of the devil. He's able to save you from the pains that the devil will cause you to experience. And if your family... To experience the pain. You know sometimes when you ask people to give their life over to Jesus Christ. They think that you are calling them to join a church. 
It is much more than joining a church. God wants to save you from a lot of pain. He wants to save you from many misfortunes. He wants to save you from a life of unhappiness. A life of regrets. A life that is filled with remorse. I thank God Almighty the time when I turned my life over to him. I was just 19 years and some months. I knew back then that God saved me from an early debt. And I knew that he saved me from drugs. And saved me from a miserable life. God wants to save you from a miserable life. He wants to save you from some pain, most of all. He wants to save your soul from a Christless eternity. That's God's ultimate aim. He wants to save your soul. So the first thing you must do, and this is one of the important things, if you despise this, it is one of the indispensable things if you want complete salvation. That is water baptism. When you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you ought to follow him in water baptism. Many people will come to church, especially all years night, give their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, but they will not make a further step to follow him in water baptism. In Matthew 28, verse 18, 19, these words came from the lips of Jesus Christ himself. Jesus came and said unto them, All authority, all power of absolute rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me. I feel that. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, helping the people to learn of me, believe in me, and obey my words baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. When you believe, you must follow the Lord in water baptism. It's just like if you claim that you are in love and you love the woman so much, what you ought to do? So stop this shocking up from tonight. Are you hearing me? Stop the shacking up and marry that woman. And some of you women, you don't want to get married? Marry the man. So it's what a baptism is like a marriage, you know. You got to do this important thing called baptism in water. Jesus set a good example when he saw the people coming out to be baptized by John the Baptist. Christ set an example. And he went to John to be baptized. So who are you who want to serve God and you don't want to get baptized? You know why? You don't want to quit your sins. Because there is such thing as preparation for water baptism. Some people, and I am not against them, it is scriptural to believe tonight and get baptized tonight. You get saved tonight, we dip you tonight. <laughs> no, I perform marriage already right here in Tobago, foreign marriage, where the two persons met on the holiday in the hotel and they just fix up the people and get married. 
you ain't gonna do that. But they fall in love, well, it's just to get married. John the Baptist is called John the Baptist because he was the baptizer. And the man preached the gospel with such urgency, with such power. That people went out by the thousands to be baptized by John. John had affected the synagogues or the churches in his days. That the people were leaving the churches or the synagogues and they were going to John baptism to be baptized in water. So the leaders got concerned and they went out to be baptized by John. And this is what John said. John the Baptist said to the Pharisees and the Sadducees, bring forth fruit that is consistent with repentance. Let your lives prove change. Of heart. Bring forth fruit. The King James says. Worthy of repentance. Because when he saw. The religious leaders. Because the people were heeding the call. And they were baptized. By John. By the thousands. So the pastors. Got concerned. And they went to John baptism. And as John saw them, he said, You generation of vipers who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come. And this is where he asked. He said, You want to be baptized? Bring forth fruit worthy of repentance. Let me see the change in your life. You know, sometimes you can go along in the water as a wet sinner a dry sinner well the world has do it i say is a wet sinner they go down dry and they come up wet my god you must make a change you must decide in your mind to follow the lord right through and your first step is water baptism so you want a change in your life for 2019? Make up your mind to be dipped in water. You want a change in your family life? Make up your mind to walk the aisles with the woman and say, I do. No, we, we got to go straight to the root of the problems in our society. So many people are just going to church, joining church, running from church to church, but they don't want to get baptized. The sinner must repent, must forsake his or her sins, and must believe that Jesus died for his or her sins. Do you know that sin is the worst problem? In the world, not one of the worst, you know. It is the worst problem in the world. In a matter of fact, let us set the record straight. Sin is the reason why the world is in this condition and it is getting worse. It's not getting better. The soul that sins, it shall die. The Bible tells us, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. The wages, the penalty, is death. And this death is eternal death. To be away from Almighty God who is life. For millions and trillions of years. If you die without Christ. Can you imagine that? 
If you die without Christ, your soul will never see life. Because Christ is the life. There is no life in hell. Hell is a place that is filled with death. The Bible tells us that hell is a place where the fire does not quench and the worm does not die. I heard a man said, the soul that sins, it shall die. When I was an unsaved man, a preacher said that to me, it would have made my soul tremble. The soul that sinned, it shall die. I got saved when a man looked me in the eyes and he says, Young man, God loves you. Nobody never told me that. And I'm telling you tonight, God loves you. And he takes no pleasure in the death of the sinner, but that the sinner should turn and live. He loves you. He loves you. The Lord Jesus Christ said in Matthew, and this is good news for sinners. I was once a sinner, now I am a saint. Sanctified by the blood of Jesus Christ. So you cannot make that excuse. All of we are sinners. I know that. But there is a savior just for you. Hear what the savior said. All manner of sins shall be forgiven. I don't care what you have done. I don't care if you have murdered people in 2018, which is this year still. You can be forgiven if you'll turn to Jesus Christ. I don't care if you turn your back upon your wife and children. You can be forgiven. You can be forgiven. Forgiveness is available to you. Christ says, not some, you know, all manner of sins shall be forgiven. God is a forgiving God. God is a merciful God. Take it now in this year 2018 and ask God to forgive you. He said, all manner of sins shall be forgiven. Isaiah 55 and verse 7 says, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. You know, one of the things that is amazing today in our generation, people have evil thoughts. Like the enemy seems like he is programming the minds of the end time people to be evil. Don't let him do that to you in 2019. Stop him. Resist him. Think on those things that are lovely. Think on those things that are good. Think on those things that are of good report. Because you have the power and the ability from Almighty God to control your thoughts. Do you know that? God gives you that power. That's why Adam had the power to choose whether he's going to obey God or obey the lies of the devil. Don't let nobody fool you. God has given you the ability and the power to say no. To restrain your mind from thinking evil. To restrain your mind from thinking bad. And please... 
everything good in 2019. And it shall be well with you. So he says, forsake your thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and you will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. This is the God that we serve. He will abundantly pardon. I don't care what you have done throughout this year. God shall pardon if you ask for mercy. God shall pardon if you cry and ask him for mercy. If you'll cry, oh Lord, save me. Lord, help me. Even you on the hospital bed, if you will cry out, God help me, he will help you. God will help you to put down the gun and break the bad company. I once came across a young man that was way in Tittle Beach. And he told me he had to run from Trinidad because of the crime. And the way in which he was talking, I sensed that he was deep in the crime. So I play off a scene. I said, when I didn't know Jesus Christ, I fear nobody. I was a madman. Because I sensed this man is a bandit. A killer. So I was trying to tell him I ain't afraid nobody. And I started to hit him scripture. I said, I'm worse now, you know. I could just pray and kill people now, you know. Because <laughs> the road the guy was talking, the guy like he put on some heavy work. I don't know for you, but I like to use this mind. God give me a mind to think, and I just use my mind effectively. You could sit down there and don't use your mind. Effectively. Sometimes I, I, I went through things where ladies want to attack me. I will say, I have one of the most beautiful women in the world. Right away I'm telling you, hey, back off. Back off. You've got to learn to use your mind. He says, let the unrighteousness, unrighteous man forsake his thoughts. Forsake his what? Thoughts. Control your thoughts in 2019 and beyond. You are a thinking human being. You got to learn to think 24-7. I believe in, even when I'm sleeping, Sister Lister, my mind is working, you know. Because I program myself so. Not even in sleep, I'm closing my mind down. These are two evil. The basic meaning of repentance comes from a Greek word which indicate is to turn around. It is a turning from evil ways and a turning to the Lord Jesus Christ. To turn around and a turning from evil ways to the Lord Jesus Christ. So make up your mind that you're going to turn from evil ways. In the ending of this year, 2018, and you're going to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, really make up your mind to turn to him. Because he never turned anyone away. 
He never. There is no record where Jesus ever turned anyone away. The vilest sinner can turn to him and he will say, yes, I forgive you. Yes, I will help you. Remember that thief on the cross? He was a dying man, a dying criminal. Turn and he says, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Christ didn't say, you, not, not you today, you're too late. He said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Today you can turn. Tonight you can turn. Turn away from that life of crime. Turn away from that life of hate and bitterness and meanness. And turn to Jesus. He will save you right now. At this very moment, he will save you. So when you repent, you got to turn. You got to turn. The second indispensable thing to complete salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm talking about complete salvation. The salvation that will bring changes to your life. The salvation that will turn your life around and bring you into a new dimension of living. Give you a new birth, a new way of life, a new perspective. Is church membership. You must, and I want to emphasize, you must find yourself in a Bible-believing church. You know, one of the strategies of the enemy is to turn you against the church. It was sometime about last month we had some things coming out on the express and note like they stopped. All churches are not bad. They are good churches. All pastors are not bad. They are good shepherds. So if you can turn your mind against the church, you may never experience salvation. Let me read it from the word of God. Acts chapter 2. I see some strong thing when I'm preaching. And I don't apologize for nothing. So I always have to preach with the scripture. Let me read it from the Bible in the book of Acts chapter 2. And reading from verse. Reading from verse 30. Seven, But let me read it from verse 36. This was Simon Peter was preaching to these people, whoever the Jews were. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God had made that same Jesus whom you crucify, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were cut or pricked in their heart. And said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? That's why I told you, you have to do something to make 2019 a year of blessing, a year of productivity for you and your family. You have to do something. What shall we do? Then Peter said unto him, Repent and be what? Baptize every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For this promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward 
or crooked or hostile or indifferent generation. Do you know that you live in a crooked, hostile, indifferent generation? How in the world, and we heard this from a foreigner, that you can marry a man like yourself. You can marry a woman like yourself. How in the world that you can marry to your car, say I do to your car, to your cat and your dog. This is a stupid generation. How in the world that you can marry to your pet? You're laughing? These things are real in our generation, you know. It's a crooked, a ungodly generation. And the Bible says it's going to get worse. Trust me. You might see the day, oh God, when a man will be able to marry his daughter. Because I'm a preacher, I have to dig up in history. The pharaohs used to marry their son. The women used to marry their daughters. I used to have in Egypt. Marry their children. This is where our generation is heading for. That's why Peter said, save yourselves from this crooked, untoward, this backward generation, this generation that calls good evil and evil good. Save yourselves, he says. And I'm telling you, save yourself and your family from this evil generation. And I love what they did. Then they gladly, they, then they that gladly receive his word were baptized and the same day they were added unto the church about 3,000 souls. You see what they did? They gladly receive his word. This generation just want to hear nice things. I made up my mind a long time ago that I'm going to say what God wants me to say. I ain't fearing nobody. I don't care what the generation gets. They could never overthrow God. They could never shut down God. Sodom and Gomorrah tried. it. And they were disintegrated in a moment. So save yourself. Young people, save yourself. Do not follow this end time generation. Save yourself and turn to Christ and serve him with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul. Save yourself. I must sound the alarm. I must pull out the sword of Zion. It's not the sword of Gideon, you know, but the sword of the Lord. I must sound the trumpet in Zion and out of Zion. Preachers, sound the trumpet. Song the alarm that is coming with power. That is coming. God help us. So you must be baptized. You must find yourself in a Bible believing church. And last but not least, the third indispensable thing to complete salvation is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. God is moving across the globe. And I want to prophesy that this coming year, God is going to move across the Caribbean. 
He's going to pour out his spirit in a way that we have never seen the spirit of God poured out. We had it in the 70s. The spirit of God was being poured out. But somehow we cause the flow to stop. Mark my word tonight. This has been tape. You're going to see the spirit of God moving again upon the land. Especially here in the Caribbean. Isaiah said some 700 and something years before Christ. The prophet Isaiah said, for I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. We must become thirsty for God. Thirsty for righteousness. God's people must become thirsty again. Thirsty so much that we must bring back the all night prayer meeting. The tarring. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. And floods, floods upon the dry ground. When the ground is dry morally, you will see all kind of sins surfacing. You're going to see people in high places committing sin blatantly. Because the ground is dry morally. The darkness is overtaking the people. So God says, I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon your offsprings and my blessing upon your descendants. We want to see this move of God that will overtake us and go into our generations that they will carry on and carry on moving in the dimension of the spirit of God. That is, that is what we want to see. And I prophesy we're going to see it. There will be an outburst of the Spirit of God moving across the Caribbean. You've been viewing the ministry of the Radical Voice of Power, Bishop Raul Reed of the Mount Grace Open Bible Church. Join us again for another power-packed session. And remember, one touch from Jesus and your life will never be the same again. To obtain a copy of this message, call our office at 639-6403. God bless you.